Hello and welcome to the second episode of Covering the Bases with Mark and Andy. Miraculously, we did not get canceled. No rain delay, no postponement, we're back. We got Jilly Burns behind the camera. She's our manager of this program. I'm reporter Andy Oriel. Joining me, not as always, but as a second time, and hopefully always, is sports editor Mark Hazelwood. Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? You got everything under control? Uh, I'm hoping to, but it's still early in the day, and I'm looking to be a loose cannon later on. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I'll tell you what's maybe not under control right now is the Cleveland Indians, because they started off the gates really hot, 3-0 in Texas on the first road trip. But then on the second half of that, they lost all three games to Arizona. So they're coming home. 500, three and three for tomorrow's Tuesday's home opener. Let me hear what your thoughts are. Is this, was that a good road trip, bad road trip? I have a question for you first. Okay, what's up? So there was, there's a guy I know who works here. He sits like right over in that area over okay. there, Far off camera. camera. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. And uh, for, for, for days, maybe even 48 hours to 72 hours, it was uh, this person kept saying the Indians were coming home six and zero. Oh. Oh man, six and zero. Oh. They're going to be six and zero. Oh. There's nothing to worry. I'm going to go to the home opener and see an undefeated baseball team. Right, right. So the three and three today. Yeah. I was just wondering if you knew that person and what his thoughts were about well, this. That person is a very intelligent mm -hmm. uh, forecast fair forecaster, mm -hmm. and and once in a blue moon, that person does make some mistakes. Blue moon. And that person, if they were here right now, would probably apologize for being that stupid and ignorant for predicting something like that. But that same person is also predicting that the Indians are also going to win the World Series. So it's all going to end up being good toward the end. So. so there was a blue moon this weekend. I think there was, yeah. Was there a blue, was there a blue moon at the uh, slot machines? Uh, you know, I, I don't check because the, there's no sky shot in the casino. So Fair enough. Anyway, so what is your opinion on the road trip that was? Uh, the road trip was a wash. And... Um, you know, you could argue there's a couple ways of looking at it. I don't know that they were, uh, probably should have won two of the games they won in Texas. So in one sense, you know, maybe they could be one and five <laughs> coming home. But, um, you know, one of my long time rules of thumbs in April is keep your head above water. You know, just go 500 or better for the month even. Don't Not dig yourself really, in a hole. Yeah, just don't get in a big hole. Seattle Mariners are finding that out already, a couple other teams. But, um, you no, know, the Arizona series was was strange. They didn't hit. They, uh, I, but I'm tired of the National League. They've, if you go back to the infamous November, October, they've lost uh, six in a row, I believe, to the National League. So I'm about tired of that one. Right, right. Um, Let me ask you this real quick. What one thing surprised you pleasantly, and what one thing concerned you over these past six games? I would say the pleasant surprise would be Probably the two things, the, the role players, the bottom of the order, I think has done a pretty solid job. So I mean, we didn't know what we had in the Yandy right. Diaz, I think Austin Jackson, you know, good spring training, does it really translate? So I think the bottom of the order and Michael Brantley yeah. okay. as a whole have been a, has been a pleasant surprise. And even to a sense, um, as you know, I was terrified about Andrew Miller pitching in the World Baseball Classic, and it doesn't look like he's missed a beat in his three appearances. So that's a pleasant surprise because I was skeptical. Right. And then on the flip side of that, um, you know, there's been some other guys in that bullpen who just don't, you know. Uh, Brian Shaw is what I call the Eric Plunk of his generation. Eric Plunk was a late 90s reliever who kind of got a bad rap because he'd have the one really bad performance, but over time his numbers were really, really good, but he was never popular with the fans. And... Uh, Brian Shaw concerns me a little bit here out of the gate. A couple of their other, you know, the back end of the bullpen's amazing, but the front end right now is, you know, it's average. I Starting wise, I thought those, you know, nobody's really surprised me one way uh, or another. I find it a little troubling that Corey Kluber has struggled out of the gate. I understand that he made one bad pitch, as you referenced, in that opening day game against Texas, but he didn't pitch that well yesterday. He gave up, I think, Two at runs. least. It's Two still, runs and six innings. That's a quality it's, start, my it's, friend. It still, still took the L, though. And I'm hoping that he, he did, did, he, did he take he the He did, but it was two runs and right. six innings. That's a quality start. I'm saying, though, it's just a little concerning. He pitched a lot of innings last year. He hasn't he really put back-to-back -back quality seasons together in his career. 
I'm just hoping that he can turn it around. I have a lot of faith in him. I don't blame him at all last year for Game 7 right. because he was a workhorse. But I just hope that things just turn around a little bit more, goes a little deeper in the games, and doesn't give up so many home runs. Just remember, his past two Aprils in 15 and 16 were about as good as you and me. Right. Maybe not even mm -hmm. as good as you and me. So that's one thing that he's actually off to a better start right. than the past two years in a sense. Well, let's, let's hope he bottoms out now and is going up the mountain. Absolutely. Let's continue on. What's this week? Um, yes. Opening day. Home opener. Give us a little prediction about what you think the Indians need to do this week. Do they still need, like you said, keep their heads above water? Well, 500 okay? They're facing James Shields tomorrow. Solid, you know, pitcher. Live batting practice. They've, you know, but he had a good first, you know, first, first start for Chicago. So, you know, you do want to respect your opponent. Um, do they face Quintana at all? They do not. Okay, so that's a that's pause. They'll face Verlander in the weekend with Detroit, though, because I think he pitches today. But they've owned Verlander the past couple of years. They have, but you just can't assume that you will. So uh, Chicago and Detroit at home, I think. I just, you know, stepping back, looking at it, um, I think 4-2 and two would be a fair, realistic expectation. I feel like this is a team, and, and Francona touched on it yesterday, that, you know, they just need to come home. You know, they've been in Arizona, spring training, then to Texas, back to Arizona. It'll be good to get them in front of the, the home crowd, at least tomorrow. I don't know how many people will be there in game two, but... Let, let me, I want to ask you about that. Coming off a World Series appearance, yeah. an American League Championship pennant, what do you expect the atmosphere to be like at Progressive Field, especially during the first week when the team does return home? Oh, I think the atmosphere tomorrow is, is going to be that of a playoff game. I, I really do. The anticipation. Game sold out in under 10 minutes. Um, You're going to it, aren't you? I, I am going to it. We'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. But um, I, I think tomorrow will be a playoff atmosphere. Even Wednesday, you know, everybody knows from home opener to game two, the crowd plummets. And that's nationwide. That's not just Cleveland. But um, I don't think there's going to be, you know, 10,000 people there. I do think they'll be closer to, you know, 15 to 18. It's supposed to be about 60 degrees. Weather's supposed to be pretty decent this week. Holiday weekend, Tigers in town. So I actually think they'll do quite well, comparatively and speaking, to the past. I don't have tickets. We actually have a debate we're covering tomorrow. In oh, debate. So, yeah. When is our first scheduled debate? Oh, it's right now. This is it. Anyways, but you, uh, this is the first opening day game you're going to be going to in a few years. Why don't you tell the audience about a little history about yourself in the first home game? Yeah, well, I mean... Uh, couple things and um, I went to every home opener from 2002 through 2010. 2010 was as a writer. The first other ones there were just as a fan. Uh, I've always go with my oldest brother who is a uh, you know miserable Detroit Lions season ticket holder. I was gonna say nutshell but okay. Since 1997 <laughs> so that tells you, you know, he has no expectations for anything in right. life because he's been a Lions season ticket holder all this time. But I uh, always go with my brother. Um, you know, for many reasons, we did not go the past five, six years. Job responsibilities here among so why, among those. So why this year, though? I just think, given the way last year went, I mean, you guys kind of have to to be there and. Um, it wasn't, uh, wasn't my idea. I mean, he didn't have to twist my arm or anything. Right. But, you know, Christmas gift. You know, let's go up to the game, etc. So, we'll be good to be back in there. Uh, I haven't been in there since the days of Manny Tired Acta in the dugout. So, um, 2002 to 2010, you know, every home opener. First one I ever went to was in 02 against the Twins, and Travis Fryman hit a grand slam in oh, the cool. second inning. And I'll never forget that because he was one of my favorite guys from that team, just a solid workman-like guy. Um, I was at the 2007 against Seattle where they did not finish the game because it was snowing. Right. And I do want to say, you know, that's one thing, like, I've been to numerous football games. I was just at one this past November where there was two inches of snow and the wind chill was 12 degrees. That's still, the, that day, it's the coldest I've ever been. Because oh, I remember watching the game, it was snow flurries. It was more well, white on the screen you're just than green. Not, it's it's April, you know, 10th or 11th, and your body has just gone out of that January, February mindset. Right. And I remember we'd stayed as long as we did because Paul Bird was throwing a no hitter at the time through almost five innings right. into the fifth inning, and then. It got to the point where they couldn't see the baseball. I remember Seattle was doing delay tactics. They were. And it was Mike Hargrove, yeah. ironically, who had 
you know, Man's Cleveland to their most success since the 40s and 50s. But, you know, what I, what I remember about that was when we did finally leave and they called the game, I had a stick shift vehicle at the time and I couldn't feel my feet. So we couldn't leave. We had to sit there in the parking lot for 15, 20 minutes until oh there was actually like some tingling in my toes. What? So that's what I remember about that one. Um, but just it's just a good, you know, I, 03 was super cold. We've had some rain, snow, cold. Haven't really had warm. I think Let's tomorrow, get some sun tomorrow. Let's I think get tomorrow some sun. is going to be the warmest the home opener on. by far. Let's not get carried away now. But I think it's going to be by far the warmest home opener I've been to. Okay. Now, I do have to say two things real quick. One being a uh, little bit on my mind, I guess, heavy heart, if you will. And you can touch on this as well. I've been thinking about this for the past two weeks. Um, first home opener in almost eight decades where uh, Denny Corrigan is not with us. And who is Denny, if you want to just let our audience know, that might not be aware of him. Denny was uh, born and raised Cleveland and taught and lived in the Norwalk School District for four decades. He's a Hall of Fame wrestling coach in Ohio, um, but just is known for his he had Indian season tickets. He was at the parade in 1948 when they won the World Series last, and he passed away suddenly at the end of January. And, you know, you wrote a story on him, matter of fact, and, you know, he made, made the framed, you know, stories for people. So, you know, first, first one without him here, it, it's been on my mind a little bit. So that's point one. Now, point two, our audience is going to bear with me for a second, because this is like... A therapy session. You're the, you're the shrink. <laughs> you a shrink. So uh, this is actually the first time where I will be back inside Progressive Field since Game 7 of the 2016 World Series. Chicago Cubs. Which we you were, were covering for the register. I was covering it for the register. You were just outside the gates. Being a lunatic fan. Being a lun lunatic fringe yes. fan. Yes, yes. Um, so tomorrow is actually the, now you've said you're over it. You've publicly said that you're over that World Series. I'm not. I'm never going to be. And I, I this was, I have to get this photo out. I, I, I have to, I have to get this out of the way for therapy purposes. This is me, obviously. Uh, well after game seven had ended. You can obviously, you know, Cubs are still celebrating out there. And... That wasn't so much me being a fan as much as it was the, the deadline. You know, there was the rain delay. So you're instantly, your mind starts thinking deadline as a writer. How late's this deadline gonna go? Uh, the highs and lows of that game, the emotions of that game, just a lot of stress, as you know. And so then that was, you know, when I finally filed my story and we were kissed and shut my laptop I don't even remember doing this, but apparently I stayed in that exact pose for a good 10 to 12 minutes. And ironically, this photo was snapped by a Chicago Cubs television reporter. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. So uh, this is my first time back inside that place since this night. And what's going through your head right now, uh, or at least during that image? So many things, because you're in one sense, it's like, you just filed a story on deadline from maybe the single greatest baseball game ever played. You can make that argument, even though it's fresh. You can make that argument. Easily the most important baseball game ever played, given the droughts between the two teams. Absolutely. So you're thinking, in one sense, I got to experience this, wrote about this incredible game. But then this is also the infamous, there's no cheering in the press box. Everybody knows that. You have to keep it all bundled in, right? That's why I couldn't be there. I had to be yeah, a fan for this. Yeah, you gotta yeah. be, yeah. you know, and you're trying to just bite your lip and, you know, Davis hits the home run in the bottom of the eighth. And it was kind of like you could let it out at that point. Everybody, you can see it pretty much filed out. And uh, that was just kind of everything coming at me at once. So well, let's let's focus on happier times yes. right now. I believe you have a trivia question for our audience members. Do you want to let people know what that what, what that is? Sure. Tomorrow's the 24th home opener at the corner of Carnegie in Ontario since they moved 
out from that dump on the lakefront to downtown. Progressive Field, Jacobs Field, depends on when you grew up. Uh, what? There's been four teams in the American League that they have not played in the home opener. Now, one of them I will give you just because it's Houston. Houston's been in the American League for what? Three, three years? years. Mm -hmm. I think this is their fourth season in the American League. So let's not count them. It's not you know, Houston's one of them. What are the other three American League teams? And you have to name all three to get the trivia question, which the prize will be TBD. We will get you a prize. We're still working on that. So Could be a handshake from you. We're like Corey Kluber. We're starting out slow, but we're going to come on real hot and real fast toward, you know, as the show keeps going. So Three teams have not participated as the opponent in the home opener since they moved to Progressive Field in 1994. Who are they? Great. Any parting thoughts for this week's episode? As long as you got everything under control. I mean, you know, I... I'm, I, I'm I, just enjoying listening to you know, what I you get, got saying, I mean, yeah. I get, oh, you're late, you're this, you're that, and... You know, I just want to make sure you're not fumbling around with anything. So you, you want have a good weekend? Oh, I had a I had an excellent weekend. Yeah, do you? Cash in the chips, did you? Yeah, I did. I did well. We had a bowling party here at the Register. It was a Caitlin Nearhood's birthday, so we sung Happy Birthday to her. That was fun. I'm sure she's thrilled to. She was let her horribly else embarrassed. I, I, I can imagine. If you were singing, I was leading the parade, just like I'll be leading the parade. Uh, you know, sometime uh, in, in early November. Can we can we slow down a little bit? All right. Well, that? yeah. No, I just uh, looking forward to having them at home. Um, as a newsman, I'm looking forward to having them in our time zone again. There we go. That was a pain in the rear. So excellent. Well, Mark, appreciate you doing this again. Joey, thanks for your coverage behind the camera in the dugout. I'm Andy Oriole. In the dugout, boy, that's that's going to be a tough one for you to come up with every week. I'll figure it out. I'm a clever I'm sure guy. You will. So, <laughs> for Mark Hazelwood, Jilly Burns, I'm Andy Oriel. Thanks for watching, covering the bases this week.